Hi everyone, it's Mike here and a very happy new year to each and every one of you. 2015 for me was absolutely brilliant and I'm hoping with your support 2016 will be even better. I've got lots and lots of things planned for the new year and I will, but I will tell you about some of those in my next video. So on with today's. Now on just before Christmas I promised you I was going to do something with spoons. So let's get on and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to go through a little bit of the preparation work that's, that has to be done, or I've had to do, for this project. Now, I've got some um, linen fabric sheets here, so what I've had to do is I've already um, torn them into strips for adding onto the canvas. I've also cut one strip um, from a diagonal right the way through the middle, because I need to add that to the spoon later. Um, I've obviously got some wooden um, laser cut letters, spelling my word that I want to use, um, but also the, the spoon. Now, if I just grab another one. Okay, the spoon that I'm going to be using started out like this. So, but because of the prep work that I needed to do, I've already gone ahead and primed it with a um, grey spray primer. So, and the way I did that is just very, very simple, and I'll just insert that clip here. Okay, so literally it was just a quick spray up and down with the primer. Now, some of it has come off because it's gone straight onto stainless steel, which is fine because that's the bit that's going to get stuck down anyway. So, from that to that to the final product that you've already seen. So. The other little bit of prep work that I've done is I've taken some cardstock and I've already pre-painted it with um, some red metallic paint. Now I've used the Indigo Blue Ruby Slippers acrylic metallic paint, but obviously you can use any at all. Now I need to paint both sides, which is why I've already done one side. So that side hasn't been done yet, so that's the side you're going to see me do. So when that's dry, we'll be ready because both sides are then done. You could use red cardstock if you want to, um, but I wanted that metallic sheen. I also wanted a little bit of that pattern coming through. Now that's musical notes. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, whether the glare from the metallic paint is too much. But yeah, there's a little bit of the pattern of the paper actually showing through. So I wanted that, you know, that effect. So that was the prep work that I had to do to begin with. So now I'm all ready. I've got my water, I've got my paintbrushes, and I've got my gesso. So I'm going to go ahead and start to put the canvas together. So I'm going to start by sticking down the wooden letters because I want them to be dry when I start adding the paint so they need to go down pretty early on in the process and I'm using some PVA glue, just standard craft PVA glue um, just to stick those down and hold them in place so that they start to dry before I get round to the point where I'm adding paint to the canvas and the spoon is there just to give me a little bit of a position so that I can work out exactly where the letters need to go So this is some book text from an old book and I'm just going to tear some strips off and glue these down directly onto the canvas using uh, matte medium from Mod Podge. Because this is a gallery wrap canvas which has deep sides I am going to make sure that I wrap some of the book text and the fabric when I stick that down over the edge 
to decorate the sides of the canvas. Now, some of the shots that I make while um, filming this or some of the framing on is, means that the canvas goes off the edge of the, the screen. Now, it's a 12 inch canvas. Now, I had to make sure that I got as much detail in on the screen as I possibly could without zooming too far out um, so that you could see, you know, close up what I was doing. So I do go off the edge occasionally. So you'll just have to forgive me for that. But that was so that I made sure that I was close enough in for you to see what I was doing, but far enough out so you got to see more or less most of the canvas in one go. Okay, so I've added all of the book text that I'm going to for now. So I'm going to put the canvas to one side so while that dries I can be working on something else. This is the piece of cardstock that I showed you earlier which had already painted the one side. Um, so that's nice and dry so I can show you just painting the reverse side of it so that when I finally get around to using it both sides will be decorated with the, the red metallic paint. I'm going to give this card two coats of the red metallic paint and then I'm going to heat set it a little bit just by giving it a bit of warm airflow over the top because I don't want to burn off any of the mica in the paint but I also don't want you to sit there watching paint dry so I'm just going to scoot to the end. So I'm going to put the piece of red card to one side to finish off drying and then I'm going to bring out the white gesso primer and I'm also going to bring out some buttercup yellow acrylic paint and I'm going to mix some of the yellow paint with the gesso and then I'm going to give the spoon a light coat to start off with. And the reason I'm mixing some of the yellow into the gesso is to um, to give the gesso a kind of a creamy kind of feel. I didn't want white or stark white, so I'm adding in some yellow to make it a light cream, almost like a, a cottagey cream color. Uh, and then I'm going to use the paint that, that's left, left, that is left over. I'm not gonna wipe it away and throw it away. I'm going to apply that onto the canvas as well in a little while. But just to start off with, I'm giving the spoon a first coat, and then I'm gonna dry that off with the heat gun and then apply a second coat as well. So this is coat number two. So what I'm gonna do is I will continue to add the layers of paint on the spoon and heat dry in between. Um, but once again, I'm trying to keep the length of the video down to as short as I possibly can. So I probably will just scoot to the end of the, the finished spoon. I'm now happy with the amount of coverage that the spoon's got with the gesso and the yellow paint but I want to give the spoon a final coat of acrylic, a full acrylic this time so what I'm going to do is mix some of the yellow paint with white acrylic and then go over the spoon one more time with that cream colour but this time with an acrylic coat rather than just a basic gesso coat and that way I know it's also going to be sealed um, well as much as possible. So that's what I'm doing now and once again I'm not going to make you stick all the way through it because you've seen me do this before so I'm just going to scoot to the end of this so you can see that it's been done. The spoon's now drying along with the, uh, the red card so rather than throw the paint away I'm going to reuse the remaining of the white acrylic paint and the yellow mixed together to make that cream and I'm going to go over the canvas and just give it a liberal kind of wash of the cream paint um, just to give it a, a base coat. And in case you're wondering the canvas is already pre-gessoed but I didn't want to give it another full coat of the gesso because I didn't really think it needed it.
Now the canvas is dry and the cream base coat is all set. I'm going to use the uh, matte medium again and this time add my scraps of that pattern fabric. And again, you can see I'm making sure that I am laying the fabric so that it does go over the edges of the canvas. So I am decorating the sides too. So doing a final heat set just on the fabric to make sure that all the corners are stuck down and nothing's going to peel off. And then I'm going to just add um, some more um, paper this time. So I'm going to add some musical paper, some music score sheet just around the canvas just to add a little bit more interest to it because I thought it did look a little bit bare. And I'm just adding a few more fragments of that book text as well because I just wanted to fill in a few of the gaps. I'm 
I'm going to add some more texture and I'm going to use the heavy carvable mold modeling paste. Now, I did struggle with trying to get the lid off the, the tub here because my elbows are hurting today. My arthritis is playing up a little bit. Um, so I end up having to just pop the top and squeeze it through the hole in the top. Not something that I normally do. I normally like to spatula it out, but this is all I could do because I just didn't have the strength to do it today. So I'm going to put the modeling paste through this chicken wire reversed stencil from TCW. I'm going to put some on the front, but I'm also going to remember to decorate the sides with the stencil too. And all I'm doing is just lightly scraping the modeling paste through the stencil because, because there's nothing underneath the canvas to give it any kind of um, support. So I'm just doing it very, very lightly and then just wiping it just gently through the stencil and then uh, it's easier than to um, to be able to manoeuvre it, if you know what I mean. So once I'm happy with that, it's out with the heat gun and just give it a blast over to make sure that all the modeling paste is dry before we add our next coat of color. So I'm taking the gesso and I'm just dry brushing the gesso over the canvas, over the modeling paste and over the fabric just to kind of tone down the color and kind of unify all those different colors that we have. We've got the pinks in the fabric and we've got the white from the paper and I'm just trying to blend all those colors together and kind of unify it a little bit so that there's nothing too much that's popping out of the background. And of course we have to remember not to forget the sides as well. And because this takes quite a little bit of time, because you never know when to stop when you're doing something like this, I am going to speed the video up a little bit more than I have done so far. I'm going to speed it up to four times just so we can whisk to the end. One of the things you have to remember when you're adding a gesso wash like this is that when you first put the paint down it does appear quite white and quite stark um, but you have to remember that when it dries it does die back. Now you can see I'm just adding some of that white gesso to the spoon as well just to try and knock back that cream colour a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that now. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a heat blast and then I'm gonna put that to one side for finished drying. And then I'm going to start work on decorating the spoon. Now I'm cutting a thin strip of the fabric and I've created a, a little bit of a faux bow with the fabric. Now I'm just tying a couple of knots just to see the best effect that I can get with this canvas. Now, obviously first attempts don't work and then you only carry on when you're actually happy. So once I've tied the knot and I've worked out how it's going to work, I then untie it all again and then retie it how I know it's going to look the best. So when I'm happy with the bow effect, I'm just going to use my glue gun, which I've already switched on, and just apply that to the neck of the spoon and then leave that to set for a while. It doesn't take long to cool, and once I'm happy that it's actually set, I can then use the same glue gun and apply it to the canvas front. Now all I've done is applied some of the glue gun to the back of the spoon, or the bowl of the spoon, and to the top of the handle. Okay, we're done with that for a while, so I'll put that away and bring out my little palm punch. This is a heart palm punch from Xcut, and the piece of red card that I've been painted on both sides, I'm now going to completely destroy and punch out as many hearts from that piece of red card as I can get out. So 
So I'm going to put those to one side now and it's time to bring out the gold paint. This is the Goldfinger Metallic Acrylic Paint from Indigo Blue and I'm just going to dry brush the gold across the canvas. Now this is where it starts to all come together. Now I wanted to age the canvas a little bit to make it look as though it was a bit more grungy and a bit more old if you like or a bit more antique. Now normally I would do this by using something like um, the vintage photo distress ink or maybe a brown ink or even a chalk brown ink just to add a bit of weathering to everything. But I thought do you know what I think I'm going to apply all the aging and all the weathering with the gold paint. Nobody says that you can't, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to add the gold paint to the edges of the canvas. I'm just going to lightly dust it over, all over, including the um, modelling paste and across the fabric pieces too. And it all starts to come together. Now, this is a process that does take quite a while, but it's one of those ones I found the most interesting because this is the point where your vision starts to coalesce pretty much how you envisage it in your head. And as I said, this is one of those processes that you could carry on doing forever and ever and ever, but you have to say enough's enough at one point. So for me, I think this is probably enough of the gold paint, so I'm going to stop. So the finishing touches for the canvas, I'm going to use this acrylic glazing medium and I'm going to squeeze a great big dollop into the spoon. Now you can see there I have some, um, some glitter uh, I also have some sequins and I've also got the red hearts that you can just see at the top of the screen there. Now I'm just sprinkling the glitter into the glazing medium and I'm going to allow that to drip out of the spoon. So as you can see the glitter is actually forming within the glazing medium. So that's going to suspend in that glazing medium and I'm adding the sequins as well. And that's going to do exactly the same thing. The sequins are going to sink into the glazing medium and mix with it. And I'm also taking all those lovely little red hearts that I've punched out and add that to the glazing medium too. Now the glazing medium should dry completely clear. Now it looks milky, a bit like glossy accents when you first add that to a project. And it does take around about three to four hours to completely dry now, depending on the thickness of the glazing medium, then obviously it will take longer to dry. So some of the parts on this canvas, I don't expect to dry straight away. They may take four hours, they may take five hours, they may take six hours. So what I'm gonna to have to do with this is position all the hearts. If there's any clumps like you can see me doing now, I'm just moving them and separating them just so you can see all the individual little bits. And I'm just trying to you know, spread them around a little bit more. And then I will just fiddle with it until I'm happy. And then I'm going to put it to one side and I'm just going to leave it to dry. And once it is dry, all those sequins, all of the glitter fragments and all of the little hearts will be encapsulated within that glazing medium. Now some will be sunk in completely, some will stick out and you will have like a jumble of texture but the glazing medium will just look like water. That's it, there's nothing else I can do with this now apart from leave it to dry. So the photos at the end will show the finished dried product. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that little canvas for the first of the year. Leave my bow tie alone, you can't have it. As you can see, I've been joined by somebody who's determined to distract me. You can't eat it. 
No. So if you have enjoyed that video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, then you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. They're going to go say goodbye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Come on then. Say goodbye. Bye. There you go. It's gone.